Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Dragoonity combinatorial video for the 2017 capabilities of this deck. Basically, just trying to spark some interest in this deck amongst myself, as well as the people who've been subscribed to me since way back when, when I posted almost exclusively Dragoonity related uh, content. But basically, I got a lot of good feedback from the previous combinatorial video that I did a couple of days back, in which I showcased the three card basic Ultimaya Zulkin combo that allows you to gain a card back mid combo, gain extra resources, and essentially end with two level eights and all that sort of nonsense. And basically, I decided I wanted to show a different sort of combo, basically show sort of the extreme of what this deck is capable of doing now, because it is kind of kind of a situational combo because it requires a one of. This is going to be one of those Ravine Flank Soul Charge combos that people love to play around with because Soul Charge is such a very, very heavy extender for this deck. It's such a superior extender for what it allows the deck to do and more times than not in the past you would find yourself running out of monster card zones or running out of extra deck slots before you actually reached a very, very good conclusion that basically solidified the game state in your advantage but we have access to new cards now since the last time i tried to basically break ravine flank soul charge wide open and the main the main piece of that is uh Cypher and Lord Omega and Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Those are two very good level 8 synchros. They're arguably the best level 8 synchros we've ever had in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! And essentially what this combo does is this combo lets you hand loop three cards out of your opponent's hand with Cypher and Lord Omega and then end with a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon at 2800 and a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. As well as searching a Ducks if that's uh, if you wanted to run Harpy Harpist because you get a free Gator dump mid combo that is basically irrelevant. So you end up with a massive amount of pluses and you take three cards away from your opponent and then with Crystal Wing on the board it's essentially taking another card away from them essentially trying to in theory make your opponent play with a two card hand going second. So essentially Soul Charge is a one of yes that is a very big detriment and that's a very big you know reason to not build the deck like this and maybe like de dedicate the extra deck slots to multiple Omegas and stuff but the card Left Arm Offering does exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! So you could in theory play Left Arm Offering because this is only a two card combo plus Soul Charge meaning that this could be left arm offering and you will have two other cards in your hand that you could utilize for your cost to banish off left arm offering and search for soul charge so essentially turning soul charge into a four of and this combo is also possible with some certain four and five card combinations of dragoonity cards they basically just all have to be combo pieces though in your hand and you can do this sort of combo but ultimately this is the easiest way to achieve it so this is what i want to showcase because a lot of people have been asking me what i thought of like the soul charge plays now that we have all the new cards that we have access to so but anyway to perform the combo it's actually pretty clear cut in terms of how it starts i mean it should be pretty obvious but the fact that we have access to cypher and lord omega to clear itself off the board just means that you can get the most value out of it but so you activate ravine discarding phalanx adding ducks to hand and then you will normal summon ducks get back your phalanx and then synchro them immediately off into your Dragoonity Knight Gaydurg, if I could get myself a little bit more organized here in terms of the extra deck cards I've got laying out in front of me. Gaydurg's effect on summon, you're going to use it to add and discard Mist Valley Baby Rock as your first step. The Baby Rock will special summon itself, and then you will synchro these two cards into your first Psyframe Lord Omega, which will you, you will then immediately use to banish itself and take a card out of your opponent's hand, gaining some information. Now from here, you're going to Soul Charge, you're going to Soul Charge for four, you're going to Soul Charge all of these cards back and you're going to take 4,000 life uh, it's a pretty hefty sum but for the uh, for the sake of not letting your opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh seems pretty worthwhile in my book but from here the Gaydurg is fresh so you're gonna use its effect and you're gonna add Zephyros to hand and you're going to discard Zephyros and then you're going to synchro with the ducks and the phalanx on board into Dragoon Knight Vajrayana and then Vajrayana is going to equip and special your phalanx yet again now from here should look pretty simple. It should look pretty like a lot like your old Dragoonie combos of the past because we're gonna just transition into our Atum shenanigans and basically go from there. So you'll make your Atum with your two level sixes and you will special Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon from your deck and then Darkness Metal here is going to special summon your Gay Derek. Now, at this point, there's multiple different things that could actually occur here. You could actually have Soul Charged for three and not brought back this Baby Rock, but that would mandatorily make you have to have three Baby Rocks in your main deck. Um, for the combo to work or you would have had to have drawn them and stuff like that Basically if you're playing something like desires you can't banish them or whatever It means that you have to run three baby rock because you'd be adding and discarding one here But because you brought it back off soul charge you have a free spot to uh, to use Gator to add and discard something else So in this instance, I usually just 
do Harpy Harpist. You can choose to run this or the third Baby Rock if you want to, but I personally like Harpist just because it gives you an extra plus. It allows you to bypass your need for Dragon Ravine next turn by adding ducks to your hand on the end phase, stuff like that. Just little uh, instances and nuances that kind of matter in the long run, um, but shouldn't really matter in the short term. You can basically uh, you can basically choose whatever you want. But from here, you added and discarded Harpist off the Gaterg in this instance of the combo that I'm showing. And then you're going to synchro with the Baby Rock and the Gaterg into your second Psyframe Lord Omega. And you're going to use its effect to banish itself and take a card out of your opponent's hand. Seems pretty good, right? Um, and then from here, you're going to use the uh, you're going to use the Zephyros's ability to bounce the Darkness Metal to your hand, summoning the Zephyros and taking 400. So you've taken 4,400 damage in the course of making this combo happen, but that's perfectly fine. Like you can afford those sorts of life point uh, like burns when you're basically allowing your opponent to only have two cards at the start of their next turn. But so you synchro the Zephyros and the uh, Phalanx into the Vajrayana, and then you bring back the Phalanx off the Vajrayana's effect. And then you're gonna synchro these away into your third Cypherm Lord Omega. You'll use its effect, banishing itself, taking a third card out of your opponent's hand. And then from here, you will banish your Atum to summon your Darkness Metal. Use Darkness Metal to resummon your Gaydarg. And then Gaydarg here is going to add and discard a second copy of Baby Rock that was in your deck, which will special summon itself. And then you will synchro into your Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Or if you have something like two back row or whatever that you want to use, you could also go for Stardust just to you know make sure that your opponent doesn't have something like Twin Twister. But then at that point, they're playing with a one card hand anyway, so I don't know if that's a huge like like liability to you if they Twin Twister two back row and have one card in hand, unless that one card just happens to be something like Mulmarat or something, in which case Crystal Wing would be able to negate that anyway. So like, I don't know if it's that big of an issue, but essentially at the end of this turn, you are then going to, if you played the Harpist, you are going to be able to add a Dragoonity Ducks to your hand. So essentially, off of Ravine Phalanx Soul Charge, you now have four cards to your name if you had the Harpist in your deck, because you have the Red Med, you have the Crystal Wing, you have the Ducks, which is three cards, plus the Ravine, which is just a static card that stays on the board. And so, you have taken three cards out of your opponent's hand, and now you have invalidated a fourth card with Crystal Wing, because this game is very heavily monster-driven at this point in Juncture. So, this is a cool little combo that I really like, and like I said, Soul Charge is a one-of, but you do have access to something like Left Arm Offering, which could definitely make this possible and you do end with four cards anyway going back up to seven next turn when all of your omegas come back so i mean like it's not like you're losing any like amounts of advantage if you're banishing those two cards off the left arm offering because you started with five cards you'll end with four and then during your next standby phase all three omegas will come back allowing your opponent to get those cards back but at that point it shouldn't matter and if you want to you can continue comboing up by banishing two copies of Omega and having room for your Ducks Phalanx combos to exist as well as your Red Eyes Darkness Metal if it has survived the uh, previous turn. So this, this is just something that I really like enjoy doing in like casual games online. Um, and basically like I might, if you ever see me play a Dragoonie list in the future, I might build it specifically just to do this because it is a hand loop. It's a hand loop that Dragoonies have access to and uh, it just seems like a very like interesting way to try and take the deck moving forward and like i said there are multiple other ways you can open this combo without using soul charge but they require like ravine flanks instant fusion baby rock missile tin or garuda like it's like very specific four and five card combos that that basically yields what the soul charge gives you because the soul charge gives you four extra cards uh, so there is that to consider as well. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. If you like it, if you don't like it, if you think it's too situational, or if you think it's not the way you think the deck should be played or whatever, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Always interested to hear you guys' thoughts. And whether or not you want to see more Dragoonity combo tutorials and stuff like that, I could definitely keep those coming. As well as combo tutorials for maybe possible different decks as well. I mean, I mean, I could probably learn the DDD deck rather efficiently and then start doing combo tutorials on that if you want to see them in video format. But that is all that I have to say about that. As always, thanks for watching. As usual, like the video to show your support, and if you want to see the channel grow, it's definitely a great way to show support. Subscribe if you already haven't, and if you like the videos that you've seen and you want to see more of them, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new here. But other than that, if you want to support me directly, you could always consider backing me on Patreon. A link to that is on screen, as well as in the description of the video. And even pledging something as little as $1 to me is investing in my future ability to create and improve content, as well as to allow me to basically make more varying content going into the future. So. 
definitely a great way to show support and you'd have my eternal gratitude for any amount that you could find it within the goodness of your heart to pledge or donate but other than that that is it for this video as always thanks for watching as i've already said thank you for your time as usual and take care guys i will see you in the next video